to a very large extent, you're preaching to the choir. How many of you have been in my courtroom? How many people have been and attended drug drug court or any other treatment court? I know, Gene, you have. Those of you who, and so I don't know many of you. So I would hope that, and I invite you to come into my courtroom, come into drug court, come into the treatment courts. 17 years ago, I helped start the first treatment court in this, in this county. I am very much involved with the mental health issues and the drug and alcohol issues. I, that is an extremely difficult issue to address, and I would like nothing better to ha have all of those mental health systems and drug and alcohol substance use disorder systems established within the community so that people do not end up in the criminal justice system. I, I teach a class at FNM about addiction and recovery and treatment courts, and that, it, that has been the last 22 years that I've been on the bench my focus. So I'd like to dispel the mistaken impression that the court and the judges, and me in particular, or specifically, prefer to incarcerate people. That is, that nothing could be farther from the truth. I would like nothing better than to get the people that we deal with the help that they need. I need to correct a, a mis, either a misstatement or a mis or an incomplete statement with regard to my comment about some people are better off in jail. Just the other day, I had a, a gentleman who could not stop using. We provided him with numerous opportunities to get the help and the treatment absolutely necessary for this gentleman. And all of the attorneys involved, including the district attorney, including defense counsel, agreed that if this gentleman was not incarcerated immediately, he would die. And the desire was not to incarcerate him, but to get him in a place where he could get the treatment that he needed to help himself with his substance use disorder. So it is never my intention or the judge's intention to simply warehouse people. Sometimes it is necessary to get people in a position where they can get the help that they so desperately need. And that is not necessarily a function or a failure on the judicial system or the court system. It's a system much larger than that. So I agree completely with all of the comments that were made. I agree completely that there needs to be the safety net before people come into the criminal justice system. And we can talk for hours about the closing of the mental health facilities and the difficulty that the prison has in getting people into facilities that they need. And unfortunately, for, for reasons beyond the control of many of the people in this room, a lot of those safety nets have disappeared or have dried up. And as a result, people get thrown into the criminal justice system. There is no place for people with mental health and substance use disorder to be warehoused in the criminal justice system. We need all of those things that you have been talking about. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. But it is inappropriate to blame certain people in this system who are desperate. Everyone involved wants to address these issues. It's inappropriate to say it's your fault or it's your fault. And Tammy, I understand where I, I hear what you're saying, and I understand what you were saying. And it wasn't to an individual. I, we were just using that line as an example. It's sure. literally held by people in power all across the country. I, I and I'll say, that. if you stand for that, then stand with us when we want to fight for the public health care advocate, when we're fighting for Absolutely. our campaigns. And all I, right, I, then. I go to countless places. That's one of the reasons I teach at FNM, because someday those kids are going to run the world. And I tell them at the end of every class, now, it, you don't have an excuse not to know what the issues are. You don't have an excuse not to understand the problems. You now have to go out and change the world. And that's what we try to do with these treatment court programs. Unfortunately, we can't force people. Well, something's not working because poverty has risen by 50 like 60% in the last right, 50 years. Just have a back and forth. No, but I'm saying it's important to address sure that. Everybody in this room who does not know me and does not know the judges on the Court of Common Pleas, yeah, that's so much of what was said here, we agree with. <laughs> um, judge, I just want to say as a personal, I remember when I first started with Justice in Mercy, and I had a person in Lancaster County Prison who had a dual diagnosis with the other he's using, and he was also um, a veteran. And I remember that you, there was like no place to put him, and you allowed him to go to um, Lebanon veterans and put him in a in a program. So finally, he could get the help that he needs, and he actually was very successful after that. By the way, I remember that. Yeah, so I, I do. That. I do remember that you. And did that's that. always Thank the goal. For that. The goal yeah. is to try and get people help. And it's not simply to warehouse people. So I and Judge, and Judge Ashwood, I just want to say yeah. that's what I tried to say. I want you to hear 
All right, we, have, we understand this because does I've need to be a partnership. Because I've sat in your drug court and I've watched you care for people. So I want you to hear that I've watched what you've done. And I appreciate it. I mean, that's why I didn't want to reset. And you know, we've had these conversations. So I want you to hear that that's, we are coming to a cooperative space. Because I hear your pain. And part of it is a misquote or a part of a quote. But we appreciate you clarifying. Well, to suggest that, for anybody to suggest that we either don't care or aren't trying to address these issues, I want to make sure, I want to dispel that rumor. Our goal is not to warehouse people in the court system. Our goal is to get people, get people the help they need, and through you. the prison, if incarceration is ultimately necessary, to get them the health, or the health and the training and the education and the programs to become productive members and happy, healthy members of the court. That's really what the goal is. Thank you. Jonathan, you've got comments? I do, thank you. Number one, I think we're all on the same side. Number two, though I am disappointed when some of the district justice bail setting is, you know, you say they're not responsible for that, but how can we get them to maybe reevaluate, you know, their perimeters? Well, the, the whole bail issue is a topic that is better addressed not here in the prison board. That the prison board has no no control over that. Just and what, hold on, just let me finish. Let me say it does. It does. John, let me finish. Okay. People who want the concepts with regard to bail need to talk to their legislators and they need to talk to the Supreme Court Rules Committee. There is a whole gamut of proposed rules with, from the Supreme Court with regard to bail modifications. As judges, we follow the rules, we follow the law, and if you want some of those things changed, they, they are, a lot of those things can't be changed at a local level because we are required to, to follow what is directed to us by the Supreme Court and by the legislature with regard to that. So, by all means, voice your, your concerns, absolutely. But to my point about the district justices, they do have discretion, correct? Every judge has discretion. So, and, and they get have them re-educated, and, and because some of these bail settings that, seem disproportionate, again, right? That's a, that's a topic for another day. At another but but it, it is not. related to the prison, sir. Well, it results the people end sure. up in the prison. Thank you. Other members of the public who wish to make comments? Yes, ma'am. Thank you.